don't believe, for instance, in the so-called guarantees for minority rights, because guaranteeing minority rights implies the recognition of portions of the community on a race basis. We believe that in our country there shall be no minority, there shall be no majority, there shall be no people. And those people will have uh, the same status before the law. Good afternoon. I think it's improper. Uh, it's proper to say at this point. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Um, I think we should start. According to my watch, we've gone uh, beyond 12 o'clock. I think we're at about five past 12. And as uh, you would know, those of you who've been here before, our attempt is to start around the time that we should be starting and also be done by uh, 2 p.m which is generally our target time to be done today. So good afternoon to all of you. Uh, we are very pleased that you could join us uh, this uh, afternoon. And we are hoping that today's Umkhavalo dialogue you will find as uh, riveting, as informative, and also worthy of engaging in for sake of uh, at least uh, uh, picking up some one or two things of value to yourselves. Um, uh, this is an Umkhavalo dialogue arranged by Owak Tambo School of Leadership, the political school uh, initiated by the African National uh, Congress. And as I said, also we continue to commemorate President Oliver Reginald Kazana Tambo. Uh, we do so during this Tambo month, which is the month of October 2022. And I also want to extend a special word of thank you to our speakers of today, Brajoni, uh, Comrade Joni Mutala, who is here with us, and also have Comrade Julia Mzweni. Uh, Comrade Julia was having a bit of a connection problems earlier. I hope that uh, we somehow managed to, to get those sorted out. My name is JP Lowe. Uh, I'm editor of Mkhavolo, and I'm also uh, responsible for communications at Oak Tambo School of Leadership. Now, today's topic, uh, comrades, uh, comrades and friends, the topic is titled Characteristics of a CADA in a Renewed ANC. I think quite self-explanatory in many ways, right? It says characteristics of a CADA in a renewed ANC. And what do we want to deal with uh, in this respect? Well, we thought that we should really sort of like do a very elementary type of uh, definition of things, start there, by trying to understand what do we mean by a CADA? I mean, here, in the movement, we like to refer to each other as comrade, CADA, leadership, and so on. But what actually is a CADA? Uh, when you are called a CADA, uh, what comes, what energy, what responsibility, what sense comes with this uh, reference to CADA? And then uh, from there, we would want to look a little bit at if, if this is what a CADA should be, and understanding where the ANC is at today. 
what then do we believe to be the role of a Qaeda in today's ANC, right? Would be the second area that we hope we would deal with a bit. And of course, last but not least, now if Qaeda ship, uh, if across the ANC, those who are members were to become the Qaedas as we were uh, to define them, do we need to have institutional changes put in place for that to be realized? So do we need institutional changes for Qaeda ship to become commonplace uh, in the African, con uh, the African National Congress? Uh, I'm gonna start with our first speaker. If uh, she's able to connect proper, uh, Comrade Julia, who is currently serving in the South African Students' Congress a National Leadership. She's in the NEC and in the National Working Committee of SASCO. And she's also an activist uh, in the Young Women's Desk, uh, is uh, also active in the ANC Youth League, uh, hills all the way uh, from the province of uh, Limpopo. Comrade Julia, uh, over to you, uh, Lida, if you are able to connect. Comrade Julia? Um, I think I'm back now. Hi, ah, everyone. <laughs> Comrade, actually, before, before you continue, Maria, let me just yeah. also say there's house rule issues, uh, comrades. I really want to appeal to everybody, if you are not speaking, please try to keep your video off. It just helps us with bandwidth and also other comrades <laughs> might have problems with connections where they are. So please, unless if you are speaking, keep your camera off. When you do get invited to speak later, we will ask you to put on your uh, video. Comrade Julia, thank you. Over to you, Lynn. Thank you. Um, I'm audible, right? Yes, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, certainly. Okay, sure. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I'm actually, I'm in a car because I'm from another engagement. So I had no time to be in an office or home. So my greatest apologies. So I think the topic that we are um, grasping on today is actually quite an important um, aspect that we tend to neglect as the organization in the MDM structures as well, because um, the key element in any organization would be your branches. That is our unit basic um, element or bricks in the organization. But then now, before we can have a branch, we need to have a cadre. Now, it's very important to um, equally also understand what type of cadre do we need to have now? Yeah, because um, these days, actually, we tend to misdiagnose or to um, to actually misquote, and we have the bad, 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 actually, and actually, we have this quotation of calling everyone a cadre. If you look at the definition of a cadre in most aspects, it will be someone that you, um, it's an ally, it will be someone that you actually have the same, I would say, focus, same objective, same narrative into addressing key issues. Now, are we to call everyone a cadre based on that? Because now, if you look at the characteristic of what we have in, in, our, in our society right now, we would have different forms of people who align to different forms of ideologies. We would have our Marxists, we will have our feminists, we would have those who subscribe to other ideologies that will be foreign to the organization. Now, today we need to actually check what, what do we need in the African National Conference, I mean, Congress at the moment for it to strive and most importantly, for it to survive. If we look at the renewal process, it's a process that has been fought. And when I say fought is that we have had a lot of friction and tension within the ANC at the moment. We would attest to this, that those who, who um, took part in the, in the policy conference saw that the biggest challenge that we had was actually, um, sorry, let me just check that, was actually um, the, the step aside resolution where we had one side of the African National Conference um, for, and then the other side against. The key elements would be that most of our leaders are, find it actually quite difficult to account. Then one side would say, no, um, the policy or the rule is quite not um, objective. It's, 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 it's almost like a tool that most people are using actually to, we would say to fight people. 
so now the character that we need in my in my point of view would be that we need to have people who are members of the organization first of all that is the first thing not people who are members of members because in now we have people who have joined the, the organization but are not actually in the organization. If a specific person leaves, they also would leave the organization. Now we need people in the organization, a character of renewal, but also we need ethical people. We need people that when we walk down the street and we see a person wearing the t-shirt of the ANC or any structure, you actually, um, I you attract the next person to join the ANC. Because at the moment now, we see a lot of people in, in the movement, we, we don't even we don't even um, attracted to the ANC anymore because of the way that people act, the way that people behave in the ANC. Now, apart from character, we need to have quality. I think we have moved from an organization that, that has become an organization of quality to actually now being an organization of rather that we bring in numbers. But what do numbers bring? if the organization cannot no longer actually have such platforms where we can actually discuss, we can learn, we can unlearn. An organization where we can actually sit down somewhere and actually have a, a battle of ideas. Now what we do, we take our members to a stadium, fill up a stadium, show off an arrogance of numbers, but not an arrogance of um, content and arrogance on, of intellectuals and arrogance of how, how do we move forward? How do we better the organization? We're not going to sit and lie and say, okay, fine. We are still a liberation movement. We are no longer a liberation movement. We have passed, we have actually moved past that. We have to be now an organization that caters for the numbers that we have. And when I mean numbers, I mean that already with the support that we have, the ANC has declined in numbers. And we will say this because of the type of membership that we have. The type of um, membership that we have is no longer um, aspiring. It's no longer aspiring others to join because of the way that we've been behaving, the way that we've been taking ourselves. Now, I think that we need to equally touch on the renewal process. The renewal process is it's not a process that is um, something that is going to happen open overnight. Um, it's something that it's a process. I think it even started with the, the, um, with the first president that we had, which was Nelson Mandel. That was, would be a renewal process in racial segregation. Um, right now, what we have is for us to attain the power that we have into something new. So the biggest problem that we have now, it will be the element of corruption and not just corruption throughout the sphere of the country, but the corruption within our own organization. We have too many members in our organization that are prone, that are taught, that are bred, and that are groomed into corruption, that are groomed into factions, that are groomed into being leaders, or I mean, we would say activists or members of other members. So now if you have such characters and you have such people in the organization, there is no organization that we are going to renew. There is no organization that is going to live. So I think that that is one of the key aspects that we need to learn and unlearn is that we are no longer members of members. We are actually members of the organization. So I don't want us to have like a, a lecture between me and um, the people in this particular um, I want us to actually then allow people to probably give in a few thoughts, then I probably can go on into the other questions. I'm not sure how you want to do this, Ipogas. Thank you, uh, Comrade Julia. Thank you uh, for your initial thoughts. Um, well, we will take some comments from Comrade Johnny just now, uh, who, uh, by the way, happens to come from my part of the wealthy in Swani. Uh, but uh, believe me, we didn't caucus anything about being here today, uh, comrades, I must tell you. But we will take uh, Comrade Johnny now uh, shortly. And I think that from Comrade Johnny, what then we would do is to um, 
uh, invite other comrades to make the inputs uh, uh, if there is any, and uh, then we'll take the discussion from the comrades. Remember, with this Mkhabalo dialogues, ultimately what we are trying to accomplish really is to engagement more with each other and to share uh, our own different thoughts and thinking about what are the things that needs to happen to move our organization forward, but ultimately also to impact in society, both in South Africa, across the African continent in the world, in a manner that the ANC have always had vision for itself for over the years. So when we get to that part, one will invite uh, all of you to make your own inputs, not necessarily just to put questions, but also to of course share some of your own thoughts. Uh, the appeal of course though, will be that we are brief so that we allow as many comrades as, as possible to, to make a contribution. Now, when it comes to uh, Ebra Joni, a comrade Joni, comrade Joni, uh, this is somebody who uh, has uh, cut his teeth in our organization for over 40 years. So, uh, you know, a, a veteran uh, by all accounts of things that you can want to uh, mention. He is a founder member of the Congress of South African Students, uh, of course, also has been involved with the uh, ASASO, founder member of ASASO, with the United Democratic Front. Uh, Comrade Johnny was also a founder member uh, 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 of um, the UDF. He had been an ex-combatant in the People's Liberation Army. Umkondo Wesizwe uh, has been an NEC of MK Liberation War Veterans and also served as former chairperson of the SA Geographical Council. I think South Africa Geographical Council, I forgot what's the full name, but really the people who are responsible for reshaping our heritage to become reflective of a South African story we can all be very uh, proud of. There's much that can be said, of course, about uh, Comrade Johnny. Somebody who's been in the movement for over 40 years, you know, you would always have all kinds of many stories to tell. He is a facilitator at the school, he's a facilitator at our Tambo School of Leadership. And uh, we think that in many ways, they uh, become quite an appropriate person uh, to be addressing us, really involved in political education, even right up to the, 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 the region of Tswani and uh, has been involved with the, the APM Das School. I mean, somebody who's really been quite uh, soaked, I would say in many ways in the space of political education. So I use it, you moving from, uh, call it a, a voice of, our youth to come and listen to our elders on this very topic uh, that we're looking at today. Trying to understand when we say a CADA in today's ANC and uh, what are we talking about? Comrade Overking, I'm going to ask, and also a self comrade Godfrey, I'm going to ask all of you to please keep your videos off uh, just to help other comrades with bandwidth. And then if uh, you want to speak later, we'll ask you to please switch the video on again, comrade. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Comrade Johnny, over to you. Thanks, Comrade. I, I want to hope that today I got the video right. Because that's something that always be. Now we but can Comrade, see your face, Comrade Johnny. 100%. Upi lapi. Okay, thank you. But, colleagues, let me start off by safe to acknowledging some of my seniors and leaders and I see even some of my commanders are blocked in here. So I'm seriously under scrutiny and have to be careful what I say. Uh, but I'm going to begin by giving a definition, my definition of what constitutes a cater. And in giving that definition, I'm going to make a serious attempt to the fact that uh, I think there are people in the ANC who the ANC will find it difficult to do without. And I want to stake a claim to that group of people. And not because of uh, verbosity or anything like that, but simply to illustrate the point. And the point being, you can't be a cadre if you are not given that title 
Being a cater is supposed to be an honor of what an individual has done or gave to the movement. And this has to have been demonstrated by what that individual has contributed and how that individual has conducted himself or herself over a period of years. And I want us to differentiate between what would constitute a revolutionary and a cadre. And I want to use this very example that I think many people will be familiar with. And that is in the person of Che Guevara. Ernesto Che Guevara was undoubtedly a revolutionary. But I want to say he was far from being a cadre. He was far from being a cadre because he was unable to analyze the situation when he moved into Bolivia. He was unable to realize that he could have staged and mounted a meaningful struggle for the people of Bolivia by first preparing them from where he was, which is Cuba, before he even moved in. Prepare them. A cadre then therefore is a person who over the period of years that he or she spends in the movement is prepared. Is prepared to reach a level where he becomes an activist without question. And at the center of all this, a cadre should be someone who impacts not only on the movement, but on the society as a whole. Therefore, we as activists, we need to seize ourselves with a task of ensuring that we produce the type of people that will deliver on what is envisaged as a renewed ANC. So the first assumption made here is that once we are in the process of renewal, we are going to reach a stage where we'd have a renewed ANC. So the cadre that we are talking about is a cadre that will deliver on the strategic objective of that renewed ANC. So what it means then therefore is that we should be when seized with the unity and renewal program, at the same time be seized with the development and the creation of a cadre. The development and creation of a cadre who will then become an agent of social change. Now, I've made the point that the number of years spent in the organization does not translate necessarily into one becoming a cadre. It may well translate into one becoming a veteran because becoming a veteran is primarily a natural progression, the number of years spent in the organization, 40 and program service and six years and above. And that's the definition of a veteran. But in terms of how that person's conduct has been over those 40 years, it has not been defined. And I argue that that is the distinct difference between a cadre and a veteran. 
when one is just the number of years spent in the organization, the other is the number of years spent in the organization doing what is expected of him. And this is seen through the impact that that person makes not only in the organization, but in the society itself. Now, the topic says the characteristic of a cadre in a renewed ANC. So that in itself is saying to us there's something wrong with the ANC as we have it today. And last night, I had an opportunity to sit with one of the less celebrated commissars of Mukonto uh, who I realize is part of the participants today. And there's none other than Lieutenant General retired, uh, Len Rasekhat. And he, he was able to articulate the position that I'm going to articulate in such a manner that it began to make a good sense to me. We happened to have been sitting somewhere in a garage and parked next to each other was a test and a push. And General says this though, he says, the producers of a car are first only seized with producing a product. But then the subsequent performance of that product is the one that makes the car a brand. Now, if we were to borrow that analogy and juxtapose it on the African National Congress, it tells us that the forebearers of the ANC were seized primarily with a construction of an organization that can lead to a particular objective. But it is the, the subsequent leaders who made that organization perform to a level where the organization was respected first by its members, the people of South Africa and the entire world. But if that performance begins to decline, we see a change in the conduct of people who, at the beginning, embraced this organization. And he further makes a point that this was seen in the local government election of 2016, where almost the entire organization was caught napping and we lost three metros. And that decline remained consistent and constant until the 2019 general elections and the subsequent local government elections of 2021. So the performance of the organization is of such a nature that those people who had placed all their hope in the organization bring about a better life for all are starting to doubt whether this is the organization in which they have to deposit their home. And what they do, they demonstrate their displeasure by voting with their feet 
by not going to the voting polls. And then therefore, in our quest to renew the organization, at the center of everything is to make this organization so attractive is to make this organization com as compared to other organizations to be a core gate of organizations and political parties. The others, they can choose what name to give, close up and whatever, aqua fresh and so forth. But we must remain this brand. And who are the people who will ensure that the organization remains that brand? Is these people that we are talking about and saying they are cadres that should be created and development to be agents of social change? Our inability to do that will surely lead to only one direction. And Comrade Julia said it but I understand she was very respectful in saying it. You know, Comrade Julia disrespected us respectfully. And I'm saying, this organization is going only one way, and that's a down spiral. Unless something very drastic happens, I'll veer from discussing contemporary and current affairs issues. But safe to say, the conduct of members of the ANC, ordinary members and including uh, uh, leaders, is of such a nature that the performance of this product called the ANC is such of such a manner that people no longer believe in it and they are prepared to test and taste other, other pro, pro products. And I must say, comrades, that you, you, you begin to understand what I'm saying when you bring in an analysis that says, this cadre that we are talking about, what are we talking about? Do we have this cadre? And the answer to the question is no, we don't. And to demonstrate that we don't have this cadre, I'll use a Christian and a communist. A Christian is forever a student. A Christian until he or she is buried, finds himself or herself in church. Listening to scriptures that he or she has been listening to since maybe birth. But this Christian, will be found in church the next week and the following week and the following week and the following week. So being a Christian means remaining a student forever. Equally so, you cannot come to a stage where you say you are a communist. A communist must develop friendship with political consciousness empowerment exercises. Because if you do not do that, you can never be a communist. And General Lenz tells a very interesting story of what happened during World War II. When the Russian troops were retreating from an advancing enemy force. And there was a bridge that they had to cross. 
But they realized that if they just cross the bridge, the advancing enemy forces will cross the bridge too. So the bridge needed to be blown up. But there was no time to set, about, set up explosives so that after crossing, they can blow the bridge. And when the commander was wondering what is it that he can do, one of the soldiers said, give me enough explosives such that if I blow them, I'll be able to blow this bridge. But the thing was that if he does that, he himself will die in the process. And the commander asked him, then what is going to happen of you? And the soldier said to the commander, please do me one favor. After this, please declare me a communist. Now substitute communist with the word Kaida. Give me enough ammunition to use this time not to blow up, but to reconstruct this organization. And when I'm done with reconstructing this organization, my reward is simple. Declare me a cadre. But do not declare me a cadre until such time that I've reconstructed this organization and I've delivered a renewed African National Congress. So in other words, comrades, we are what we are. A cadre then therefore is an activist that is forever in training. It's an activist who through his social behavior attracts the love of his people. A trader is driven primarily by his love for his people. A trader then therefore understand what it means by sacrifice, determination, dedication, loyalty, and finally, what it means to be selfless. I was talking to one comrade that say, you know, and you were saying, hey, my name, you, comrade Johnny, I can see there's a rush, you know, for people to be in the NEC. And I think the bar has been lowered. And I said to him, which bar? There's no bar that has been lowered or a bar that has been taken up. There's no bar. The bar has been removed. There's no through the eye of the needle. The needle has been stolen. It's now through the eye of a double garage door. Genani. So it will take something at another level to ensure that those of our comrades who ultimately get onto the NEC are people who will not be found wanting if people to be trained as ultimate traders are called upon. Now, Comrade JP, I can safely say the conduct of the product that we want to produce, the conduct of a cadre, 
should be such that we develop people who suit the agenda that we set ourselves to achieve. And that is, what is that agenda? That agenda is the creation of a national democratic society. And we have defined this national democratic society as non-racial, non-sexist, united, democratic, and prosperous. And I argue that we'll be failing in our tracks if we don't start dealing with very small elementary problems that are presenting themselves as a challenge to the achievement of this noble strategic objective. If we still allow people, or if we still do not find anything wrong with someone driving around in a car with a sticker called Rotten Shumela Vendor, and another one with a sticker saying to move the 110, 110% Zoom. How do we hope to construct this national democratic society when we can't even deal with one element, which is, is almost institutionalized tribalism? The very same thing that led to the formation of the African National Congress in 1912. So, yes, we are here. We want to talk about the characteristics of a cadre. But once we have done that, the next step will be, what is the philosophy that we are going to adopt as a leading philosophy? towards training activists, our activists, to becoming the cadres that will be ready to service a renewed ANC. In other words, I'm saying the topic, among other things, seems to suggest that the organization, the ANC that we are talking about, that means this cadres is not today's ANC, it's a futuristic ANC. So first, we have to come up with a clear philosophy that needs to be adopted towards ensuring that that futuristic ANC delivers on its mandate. That's the first thing. The second point is that we need a clearly crystallized and refined mandate for that renewed ANC. And I can tell you that crystallized mandate, that clear mandate is not the mandate that the ANC today carries. And I can make many examples but I, want, I must tell you that today is not the day to start a quarrel with anyone. But I'm saying things, the ANC is no longer bleeding, it's hemorrhaging. We have an athlete that is in ICU and want this athlete in 2024 to come back with a gold medal. So we need all the surgeons in the country to make sure that this athlete is ready to run the race in 2024 and win a gold medal, and which is win the elections in 2024. Otherwise, we are going to find ourselves being ruled or governed by our inferiors. And there's nothing as painful as being governed by your inferior. I stay in Tswana, I know that feeling. So how do we ensure that we don't end up being governed by our inferiors? It's by ensuring that we roll up our sleeves and we become actively involved in refocusing 
this organization of Oar Tambo in ensuring that at the end of the day, we have an organization that the people of South Africa will identify with, not members of the ANC, but the, the 12 million people of South Africa who vote for the ANC. How do we ensure that they continue to vote for the ANC and new ones come and vote for the ANC? And we cannot achieve that if we do not develop enough cadres in our society. And let me conclude by saying, in the interest of time, let me conclude by saying, the question that remains with us is this. The creator that we are talking about should be such of a character that you will be able to renew the ANC himself. Because there's no sense in just serving in a renewed ANC if you yourself does not renew the, uh, the ANC, because that is very lumpen. The cater we are talking about shouldn't be a lumpen. And this cater must be one that will justify why he or she must be trusted with a program of delivering on the project of a renewed agency. Therefore, the brand, the ANC, is losing its appeal to the consumer, which is the people of South Africa. Because the standards of the performance of the constructed product have been lowered. And the society will never, ever forgive us for letting it down when it had hoped on us to deliver on its aspirations, when it continued to give us its vote for 25 years. And comrade JP, and comrades, if I had slides, I'll be on the last slide. And I always find difficulty in delivering the slides slide because on it is written thank you. <laughs> Comrade John, yes. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, certainly ending in a in, in a pretty typical Comrade John Brajoni print a, a, a method if I can call it that. Comrades, there you have it. I think a number of pointers being raised from Comrade Julia to Brajoni there. I mean, one of the things uh, Comrade Julia was uh, putting there, I mean, some, something that just stayed with me a bit. She asked the question, are we still a liberation movement? Um, and in fact, should we even be behaving like one? What does being in this current context of today uh, mean? Uh, and I mean, I want to, of course, still always take these issues back to the topic of today, which talks about cadres in our organization because uh, should cadres be the kind of people who see themselves as a, a, a taking forward the agenda of the liberation movement or is it uh, other, is it redefined? Like is our role and mandate redefined if you like in the context of today? Now, uh, there's, there's also a point that Cobra Johnny made, you know, and for my own self, I must say it's been an issue that one has a thought about even for some time that says, do you become a cadre uh, as a veteran, really just on the basis of the number of years you spent, which is over 40 years in the organization, or should it be also about the things you have done over the 40 years that uh, infuse or 
uh, affirms your cadership, if you like. Uh, that's just something that stayed with me a, a, a bit. And then there was the issue about the quality of leadership. I suppose this inevitably takes us to the fact that you know we have a conference that's coming up. And the, the, the point being made is that the quality of the leadership that you have is ultimately going to be what determines whether you could even have what we can refer to as cadership as a way of doing things uh, in the African National Congress. And of course, all kinds of all other things come uh, uh, out of that uh, Congress because it goes back to our own processes. Uh, how do we choose who must lead us? Uh, and after we've chosen them to lead us, by the way, uh, what are the things that needs to happen for us to be able to, to consistently, consistently say uh, this leadership that we have chosen here is indeed the correct uh, leadership. I see uh, Comrade Beni Mpatlele on the uh, chat group says that uh, futuristic ANC, we need a crystallized and refined mandate to realize such a futuristic uh, ANC. Then uh, Comrade Tulani Binase uh, 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 quotes, I think it's Comrade Johnny here says, a Kada is driven by deep love for his or her people and says this, this speaks to the level of political consciousness of both leaders and members. Now, uh, Comrade Johnny, uh, Comrade Tulani is saying that maybe you can reflect on what a political conscious Kada means for the renewal of the organization and what such a Kada must do to protect the brand called the ANC. I mean, I think that in some ways you've answered this question, but of course you could come back to it if uh, there are also other additional um, pointers you want to make considering the manner in which Comrade Tulane is putting the comment there. Then I see Comrade Nomi uh, quoting you also the button, Comrade Johnny, when talking about the pain of being governed by your inferiors uh, um, as a, a risk area that we are potentially uh, taking ourselves into. Comrades, I'm going to open this floor to yourselves for us to engage. This is not just really for purposes of uh, asking questions, but it's also for us to hear what are your own views as well in relation to the topic that we have of today. Uh, we do still have a bit of time, so one will be but lenient with time at this point uh, uh, in terms of whatever inputs you want to make. And we will then go back to Comrade Julian, Comrade Johnny, uh, and see where the uh, discussions take ourselves. So whether it's comment that you have or whether you have um, uh, a particular question you want to pose, this is the time. Uh, I'm going to ask also that when we call on you to speak, uh, first we'll give you a right to unmute, but we'll also ask you now at this time to also please uh, uh, switch on your video. We want to see your lovely faces uh, as you will be speaking. Comrade Kefente, I think we're going to ask with you. Uh, you have the floor. Um, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Facilitator. Uh, thank you very much once again to the School of Oatambo, uh, School of Leadership, for hosting this progressive Umkhabulu session. Uh, to the speakers who gave their presentations, Comrade Julie and Comrade Johnny. Uh, those were really insightful inputs. With that said, let me greet comrades and say peace be unto you. Uh, I'll start off by trying to define a CADA and take my definition from uh, Che Guevara, you know, and he gives, uh, you know, uh, certain characteristics of a CADA which I feel are important for a renewed ANC. And uh, in, in giving those uh, characteristics. He says that a Kada is someone who's sufficiently politically developed, has the ability to interpret extensive directives from the central power, ideologically and administratively disciplined. A Kada knows and practices democratic centralism. A Kada knows how to analyze and evaluate existing contradictions, meaning the material conditions of the time. He knows how to work within a collective. His, his loyalty has been tested. A Kada is someone who has physically and morally developed himself along with the 
ideological development. Someone who's capable of self-analysis, Ekeda is someone who's creative and a leader of high standards. Ekeda is a technician with good political, with a good political argument. And lastly, Ekeda is an exemplary human being. So with what the speakers have said and having defined the challenges we have in terms of the quality of membership and the quality of the leaders we have within the ANC, I think to have such a person who has these characteristics would be very important for the renewal of the ANC to be realized and for it to thrive and be sustained. And secondly, is to start off, you know, by perhaps, uh, you know, rebuttaling uh, Comrade Julia when she says, she said something like, before we could have a branch, we should have a cater. Uh, I'm of the view that in fact, before we have a, a, a a, 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 a CADA, we should have a branch. You know? So a CADA must be developed within a branch. And I think she agrees with me when she says part of the problems why we do not have the development of CADAs is as a result of the branch inactivity that we are seeing. And therefore leaving a room where our political culture is being led by factions. So the political culture of the ANC as things stands is being highly led by factions. So people are members of factions. They interact with factions more than they interact with branches. And I would give an example, uh, you know, uh, uh, with, with my branch, for instance, to say, we, we barely have branch meetings, you know, uh, and every time you want to engage with, with cadres is within caucuses. So it means that I, interact more with certain comrades rather than I interact with the ANC within a branch. And with that, there cannot be a development of a cadre because then, you know, uh, this particular group of people I interact with do not have the sufficient capacity to be able to impart these uh, skills and qualities that define the cadre as I have defined it. And lastly, is to speak about what kind of cadres I think are important for a renewed ANC and what is the underlying principle that must be a convergence for all of them. The underlying principle should be the understanding that we are engaging in a revolution called the National Democratic Revolution, which is building towards the National Democratic Society, as Comrade Johnny has said. And they should understand that they are active participants in that revolution. And now the different types of cadres I think we need, we need the party cadre, right? This is a cadre that will be developed to be able to take care of party affairs, right? And then you also need a bureaucratic and administrative cadre. This is a cadre that you stand to government. There must be a development, a deliberate development of cadres that we sent to, 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 to the government. But these must be separated from the cadres that we define as party cadres so that we can you know, uh, deal with this confluence of the state and the party so that the line can be drawn. It cannot be that automatically just because I'm the chairperson of the province, therefore I become the premier without really assessing has this cadre been developed enough to be able to be a, an administrative cadre and carry out the democratic revolution within government. The third person we need as a cadre is the ad academic cadre. You need a person that will be able to produce ideas of the revolution and be able to popularize those ideas within academia. So we need people who are developing as academic cadres. We need, fourthly, the entrepreneurial cadre. This is a cadre that must, you know, uh, be entrepreneurial in their mind. So there must be a difference when we see an entrepreneur who we refer to as a cadre that has been developed by the movement and any other entrepreneur. They cannot act the same. So a, an, an entrepreneurial cadre would understand that in as much as 
I am here to make profit, but I am all and therefore I must make sure that part of the profit that I gain is reinvested back in the community for purposes of advancing the revolution. It, 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 it must not be that I'm defined by the type of cars that I drive, the type of house I live in, the type of clothes that I wear, you know, uh, and those are what defines me as an entrepreneur, but I should be solely defined by the role that I'd be playing in advancing, you know, the, 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 the revolution. And lastly, you, we need a professional cadre. These are professionals who participate in different spaces within the state and outside of the state. They need to understand that they are professionals who are advancing, you know, uh, 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 the, the revolution. So when you have an engineer, this engineer must know and understand what their role is within the democratic revolution. When you have a medical doctor, this professional cadre must understand what their role is within the democratic revolution. And this is how we develop these cadres. We develop these cadres firstly and primarily within the branch. But secondly, institutions such as the OR Tambo School of Leadership are important. But how they do it is that they should be able to say, we are not giving a blanket approach curriculum in the development of cadres. When we are developing the administrative cadre, this is the type of curriculum that we'll give. When we are developing the academic cadre, this is the type of curriculum would give. And for this to be effective, you would need partnerships. For instance, when we speak about the administrative cadre, I see no problem with the OR Tambo School of Leadership, you know, partnering with the National School of Government to say, uh, we have identified these cadres as future bureaucrats, and therefore, we would like to develop a particular curriculum that would empower them to be able to understand the processes within the bureaucracy. I see no problem with, you know, the OR Tambo School, uh, School of Leadership partnering with the, you know, uh, 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 professional forums that are there, you know, in order to develop professional cadres. So mine is to say in closing that when we speak about cadres in a renewed ANC, we're not speaking about people who are homogeneous. On a principal level and at the fundamental level of value base, perhaps they have the same understanding of what the democratic revolution is and the core values of the ANC. But in terms of the skills and the arguments that we develop, they are not the same people. And therefore, we need to be deliberate about developing these different cadres, which will play a central role in the national democratic revolution. Thank you very much, Comrade Chair. Uh, thank you, Comrade Kifense. <clears throat> Number of uh, interesting points. Uh, Comrade Zunaid Surti, your next one. Afternoon, comrades. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Leader. There's three things that are still in the ANC today's big time. Did you hear what I said? There's three things killing the ANC big time. When people think don't favor someone, they happen to go to court and favors them that kills the movement. And number two, we are undermining the integrity committee of the ANC. And last but not least, when we go into council meetings, we happen to vote on oppositions where we happen to lose many, many things in council also. That's all. Thank you. Uh, Comrade Zunet, I think you just got cut. Unless if it's only me who's losing the comrade, uh, comrades. Uh, Comrade Zunet? Comrade Zunet, okay. I'm gonna try Comrade Tumelo, then we'll take Comrade Zunet again, uh, if he's able to uh, come back. I see I'm not the only one who lost him. Uh, Comrade Tumelo Pizzo, you're on the floor, leadership.
Uh, no, thank you very much, uh, um, uh, Comrade JP uh, Leroy, uh, for the opportunity. I welcome the presentation uh, of the two speakers, a very uh, informative uh, uh, presentation. Uh, well, I, I think uh, one of the one of the things that you'll 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 find in a branch. I mean, I mean, uh, a key that you will definitely find in a in a in a branch uh, um, modeling the 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 core values of the of the ANC because I, I think um, uh, at the center of of uh, of being a Kida uh, is because because at the uh, at the branch level you you uh, you can you know the parts of the organization because you know uh, what is happening uh, at, at the branch level so um the, the uh, i think um, one thing that uh, one thing that uh, Akeda, uh should do uh, is to really um, to to make sure that uh, the nc uh, is being portrayed uh, in a good uh, uh, manner because that's where um, um, that, that's the opportunity for for Ikeda to show to show uh, what what he, uh, what what is he representing in terms of our uh, our, our core values of, of of the African Nation Congress, and um, you know there is a, a a transition gap where whereby uh, the the tertiary uh, membership that we we do have there is a gap there that uh, that we lose uh, our members there our 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 working class who we we lose and i think that 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 is where our um our kida uh, should be found because um Akeda, uh, everything that he does uh, at the center of it is is is, is based on on the people, and um, as as there has been mentioned that uh, there is a decline in membership, and that decline, I think, uh, if 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 we 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 have renewed our our Akeda, uh, in terms of the the character that we want we want him him or or had to to portray in the in the society, I think that uh, that should play a very important role. That that will that will bring a uh, development, and I think uh, basically the the uh, coordinated social response, uh, which is centered around a uh, Ikeda, uh, whereby there is a uh, there is a, a a social ill in in the society, I think the CADA uh, knows very well that that is his uh, uh, job uh, in terms of uh, uh, delivering those uh, those challenges, because uh, CADA understands that our movement, um, our movement, uh, our liberation movement, uh, is based on the people, and you will find our movement in in society, uh, in in our challenges. Uh, our movement is like a vehicle. It drives the uh, social, social, uh, social ills uh, which are uh, which emerge in, in in our community. So, uh, yeah, I, I I agree fully with our uh, our two uh, presenters. And um, a, a, a I think this is a a an opportune time that a, a Kida, um could grab with both hands. In terms of um, um, delivering those deliverables uh, of uh, our of our uh, our mandate, we must remember that our developmental mandate is to uh, bring a a a, a, a a a material change in our in our people. Um, 
I mean, in pursuit of a, a, a national democratic society, uh, I think uh, we, we should be aware that um, in terms of um, uh, balance of forces, we don't want to find ourselves um, um, the balance of forces skewed in, not in our favor because uh, in terms of um, uh, the challenges that I, I measuring in our society, um, if they are not uh, tackled uh, uh, right now, I think we are sitting in a time ticking bomb because uh, the, 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 the imbalance of us will skew not in our favor. So uh, that's, my, that's my contribution. Um, thank you very much, Chair, Chair President. Uh, the, thank you, Comrade Tumel. Thank you. Comrade, I'm just looking at the number of hands and also the time. So I'm going to ask for our next coming speakers to please try to keep it to five minutes. Uh, we still have to go back to our speakers of today who may want to make some comments to the inputs that we wish to make. So please, my appeal to you, please keep it to five minutes. So comrade, uh, comrade, uh, sorry, I'm colored and I'm Mutswana. Uh, so sometimes my expression of uh, Zulu names can be horrible. But comrade, uh, you are next on the floor, my liver. Comrade, I'm sure I spell, I, I pronounced that name, they said name correct. Uh, comrade, let me say, you have the floor, yes. Yes, please unmute. There you go, sure. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I, won't be, I won't be too long. I'll just have two minutes because I just want to agree uh, with a few things, especially on the first speaker in terms of the definition of the cater. I think I agree. You know, there's a friend of mine who always say that uh, we induct uh, comrades every day, but they don't get inducted. And the question is, it, is it because they're not getting inducted or they don't want to be to, to take the induction for, forward? I'm raising this committee because we've got the ANC that have got its policies and principles and conferences that speak to almost everything that was being about here. But we've got people who are, who are steadfast that they are not going to do what is going to be done in the ANC themselves. They, they've got that thing. So my point is that the ANC need to urgently enforce law. We, we need to enforce law. The question of discipline has been a long time issue. Uh, from days in memorial, there has been a disciplinary committee in the ANC starting from the branch up to a national level. And I can tell you, if you can enforce discipline and society can see that people that are doing wrong in the ANC are disciplined. I think many people join the ANC and many people will participate in the ANC freely and be good caters. Uh, during this era of uh, Comrade President Ramaphosa, when he started about all these things of the Zondo Commission, moving forward with them and so on and so on, they also said have confidence in the ANC, not in Ramaphosa as a person, but in the ANC. But what happened thereafter? When the commission was completed, uh, volume one, volume two, volume three, volume 10, nothing has happened. The whole morale people have hoped for went down again. So the issue I'm making come with that in as long as, as the ANC does not practice what it's, it's preaching, it's going to be a very big problem in the ANC itself. And the whole society won't, won't have a, uh, one have confidence in the ANC as well, only not having confidence in the ANC, all of us in this forum. Because I can, I can surely tell you that all of us are just thinking, are we going for coalition in 2024? Are we going to win outside as the ANC? But the fact of the matter, comrade, you can only attract people by, by doing right things. If you do wrong things, people will run away. Many people in South Africa are good with themselves. But if they see that what we are doing there is not right, they will not join the thing. They will say away because they say that this is not helping them. The, the other point I want to make is that one of the things that is a, 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 a challenge 
is the whole issue of the economy. Uh, when it's put nicely about imperialism and so on that is happening globally. And maybe we can narrow it down and speak about capitalism, poverty, and so on and so on. But the fact of the matter is, people will never eat what is in somebody, in somebody else's mind. People want material things. They want benefit for their lives and for their children and to prove their future. If South African, the South African economy is the way it is today, is resulting to poverty and all those people, people cannot, cannot have food to eat, people cannot have clean water to drink, people can, cannot have shelter, then that becomes a problem. Because the same Sheikh Kovar was quoted here speaking about the cater, he will tell you that poverty can produce two things, either a comrade or, or a criminal. And that's the reason why you find that our comrades are killed every day in various provinces by criminals. You are elected to be a councillor today, three days down the line, you are killed. You stand with a councillor to, today, you are killed. It's all about the economy of the country. It's not it's, it's, the economy of the country is not benefiting the, the poorest of the poor of this country. So the issue of economy needs to be dealt with uh, vigorously. So that at least people can be, people can have something to eat, can save them to everything they want to for their lives. Because comrade, there is a very big connection to me between the, the, the our leaders that are leading us and the killings. When people get there, who elect that people to get there? Some community community raised something very important here that people go there by factions. If a person is go to the NEC of the ANC or go to parliament through factions, that person opts to live to the ideas of that faction. And that is not a cater. That is not a cater of the ANC. So I'm saying the focus is that as long as they, still, as they still have the economies the way it is, there will always be crime, rife crime, killings that are happening every day in each and every province of the ANC, of the, our country, gender-based violence, all those things. I'm not saying that's the only thing, but proof that in some cases, because those people that are killing people, I'm not sorry, those are not in the ANC. People are bought from the streets, go and kill that person, 20,000 and 10,000 and so on and so on. You see? So those are the trends, the, the, the case of the ANC committee, we said it, we need a cleaver that is selfless, not that is selfish. We don't need populist. We don't need tribalist. We need a cater that lives with the values of the ANC as we find them in the constitution of the ANC. One comrade makes something which we, we don't want to do here in the ANC very well. We are not the ANC of the 50s, of the 60s, of the 70s, of the 80s, where people were, were good in, going in, 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 in their mass mobilization and, and the arms struggle and so on and so on. We are in the ANC to build a country. Then, therefore, you cannot have a cater of the ANC that is unable to read and write and put it as a counselor and expect that we're going to get service delivered to our people. Because that person will go to the council meeting and sleep, literally sleep. And that person will come to the, to the, the community where he's supposed to be addressing issues and can't be able to address those issues because they didn't hear anything about them, doesn't know anything about them. That person need to go to school. The comrade was correct. I mean, the leaders of the ANC, whether the cabinet, but the leader of the ANC, they go throughout the, throughout the world in different countries. When you get there, you find a word counselor who is an engineer. Well, 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 this is, well, we're on your five minutes now, man. We need to wrap up. Oh, let me stop it there, comrade. I'm sorry, maybe let's speak one day again. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're taken by the spirit. Uh, we, are, we, are, we all love the ANC and one except the spirit sometimes takes over. Uh, you are a little bit of a minute over. So comrades, uh, I'm really gonna appeal very strongly that we all try to keep to the five minutes. I am keeping time. Comrade Wonga, uh, you have the floor leadership. So over to you, please. We can unmute. Okay. Go ahead, Comrade Wonga. You're muting and unmuting yourself. Please unmute. Yes, there you I'm go. I'm not going to, afternoon, comrades, I'm not going to spend even five minutes on what I'm going to say. Um, comrades, the, the speakers have mentioned two 
as mentioned, very powerful inputs here. And uh, I want to believe that um, we need to lay more emphasis on the issue that the ANC cadership perspective has been lost. In that the ANC has lost, or the cadres who are supposed to be cadres within the ANC have lost their morality. We have honesty challenges, and we are also um, engulfed with um, cowardice within the ANC in itself. What, what I mean, comrades, by what I'm saying is that the ANC today is scared to instill discipline within its cadres. We, ha we have comrades who want to stand for ANC leadership positions but highly morally challenged. And when you call out their moral challenges and then they want to raise the issue of, but I'm not guilty until I'm proven as such. But that is not the point. The point is you need, we need, we're supposed to lead society. And then when you are morally challenged within society, society associates you with the ANC. And as a matter of fact, when they associate you with the ANC, the ANC then becomes morally challenged because KDAS becomes the face of the movement. KDAS articulate, as Comrade Pionga has mentioned, the principles and the values of the ANC. And now how were with your own morality, moral challenges and your dishonesty, do you then as a cater go out there and sell and work towards building the same organization that you are compromising with your own moral challenges? So what I'm trying to say on the other note, comrades, is that we are going to, we are heading towards conference now. And if you look at BECs that have been elected in BBGL, and you look at RECs that have been elected in regional conferences, and you go towards provincial conference, you'll find it from there that their leadership is lacking in itself. And because now when we go towards electing, we are electing because our people are on auction. And anyone that auctions people on the ground level takes all those people and goes and auction and put them on a higher bid auction. At the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the national conference. Then that compromises the quality of leadership that we want. And that quality of leadership, what we want, then turns into becoming a cowardice leadership that has no backbone to address, address the shortcomings of the ANC. And instead, we are here to please each other because we are friends now. And because I know a lot about you, we blackmail one another. And that compromises the organization itself. And this is why the ANC is dropping. The ANC people are actually compromised. People no longer want to be associated with the ANC precisely because of our own doing and our lack of understanding of cadership. You know, That's when they no Okay. You say my time is up, comrade. I was saying last minute. Yeah. So yeah, what I'm saying, comrades, is we need to engage in a war where we have to rebuild the morality, the principles, the values, and the honesty within the ANC itself. Or otherwise, we should we will keep on defining cadership and renewed ANC on all of that, whilst we are not doing the practical work at the crowd level. Thanks, Chair. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much, Commodore. I appreciate it, Lila. Uh, Comrade Manenze. Your next uh, leadership, let's unmute you. Please unmute and take the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, and uh, our time was full of leadership. Uh, I just want to ask two questions based on the presentation of the first presenter. I think it's Julia R. Mutsuini. She mentioned something of which that is critical that uh, there is no renewal in the organization if the function exists and how the function exists in the organization is because the members are recruited to be members of members 
And in terms of power, those members, they demonstrate powers amongst uh, each other. So my first question to, to Julia is that, uh, how do we make sure that uh, the currently existing function, we destroy them permanently? That is the first question. The second question is, how do we make sure that uh, in future time, we don't, we are not going to have new functions that are going to arise? Thank you very much. Uh, Comrade Manenze, uh, you are bringing us back on time, Lida. Thank you very much. You're very much to the point, I must say. Uh, 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 thank you for your for your input. Now let's uh, go to Comrade Musa. Comrade Musa, please unmute. Comrade Musa Mabasa, you have the floor, leadership. Yes. But now your connection sounds very bad. Yes, uh, thank, thank, thank you very much, Comrade JP. JP. Yes, please proceed. Firstly, let me, let me welcome the input let's by the... Continue. Yeah. Yeah, I think let's, let me welcome the, the input by the, two, by the two comrades as presented here. But I think in the, in the topic itself, the, there is what, what, what is called the renewed ANC. Number of things they have touched, but I think a, a Comrade Defense M. Curry has also outlined what is our, what is our responsibility as, as we are trying. But I want to narrow my, my argument to these two, two specific things. One, I think we should be able to say as and when we are renewing, we must be able to identify things that has led, these things that is making us a thinking organization in society, the, the societal discord that people do associate with our ANC with, with the number of ill things that, that likes to encourage them to support us in, into all the national activities like elections. Uh, this, this I'm raising because, like, like one comrade has indicated that as an organization, we had a number of resolutions, starting from the political report that Nelson Mandela gave in 1997, I think, in Mafeking, and also Comrade Tabombeki repeated it again in, in, in Pulukwan, that as much as we, we don't agitate ourselves to be true, honest members of the organization, do away with uh, the politics of incumbency, protecting ourselves in order to continue to do wrong things. Uh, also do away, refrain from uh, embarking into the wrong elements that's, that seeks to discourage other people to joining the ANC. I think that is what we need to do in order to define correctly what our renewal should be focusing on. Because our moral conduct into the society it's making people to run away, away from us. And uh, I think the other issues have been correctly uh, raised by other comrades. The, the issue of morality, the issue of uh, who we should, how we should actually approach this renewal. Lastly, I think we need to have, we need to mobilize and organize ourselves into a branch in which we must develop an inventory that a branch and a member in a branch should be able to satisfy this kind type of criteria in order for that particular person to either to be called a cadre or an activist. I think that is the model that has been adopted by the Communist Party of China. You must first satisfy certain requirements in order to fall into the, the leadership column of the organization. Comrade JP, that's what I wanted to put. Thank you, thank you, Lida. Just as I was about to say, uh, you are on the clock. Comrades, I see there's uh, three more hands. I'm going to come back to the comrades now. I just want to see if uh, we can get any comment from, uh, comments rather, from comrade uh, uh, Julia at this stage from the views that has been expressed. And then yourself as well, uh, comrade Johnny, after. Please briefly for about five minutes uh, or so from each one of you. Comrade Julia? Uh, I hope we haven't lost her. 
Okay, Comrade Johnny, let me come to you once we are trying to figure out what's what with Comrade Julia. Brad Johnny? Uh, yeah, Comrade JP. No, th thanks a lot. I, I realized that a, a, a number of points were raised by comrades, some of which need a total presentation altogether. But let me indicate that uh, my approach has been a simple one that says, we, we have gone through a lot of literature around the uh, uh, CADA development, what constitutes a CADA, and, and all, 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 all other sorts of things. But at the center of it all, I think is the question that was raised as to what is it that needs to be done by this new CADA that we are talking about. Comrade Wonga, for instance, was saying, what do you do in the face of lack of political morality? Now, allow me to bring in an element that says, what we normally refer to as corruption in whatever form, to me, is the stench of mismanagement and maladministration. And I think it was Comrade Defense who in his elaborate input started bringing about different categories of, of cadres, including but not limited to what he would term bureaucratic cadres. Now, these bureaucratic cadres are cadres who will be schooled in such a manner that they avoid this that I call the stench of mismanaging, mismanagement and administration, uh, uh, maladministration. Because it is this stench of mismanagement and maladministration that present itself to the society as corruption. Now, in this instance, what one gets is that you get the corruptee corrupting the corrupt. What do I mean by that? The person that sits at the desk who is supposed to assist people who come there for a service. Ask the people who come there for a service, what's in it for me? So in other words, he gets corrupted by actually requesting to be corrupted. And unless we have got a bureaucratic cadre as defined today, we cannot get rid of that. That's number one. Number two is when we talk, for instance, uh, Comrade Musa, where did all this thing go wrong? It all went wrong when we chose to close our eyes in the glaring face of mismanagement carried out by our own cadres. And when they are caught out, we are the first one to step out and say, and this I found very interesting, saying, yeah, but this is selective. By saying this is selective, you do not necessarily mean that this one that they caught is innocent. We are saying, but yeah, this is innocent, but there are, I mean, this is, uh, uh, has violated something and there are other people who have violated. So no, 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 no. You only have this one, get others. When you should be saying, but this person is innocent. He shouldn't be arrested in the first place. We say, no, the arrests are selective. Now, so comrade JP and comrades, I'm saying, the level of understanding of the severity of the wrong things that we do when we are in a position of power 
bring us to what I call the level of political consciousness. What is it that you do politically should inform you of what decisions you can or cannot take. So like I say, there's a myriad of issues that have been raised in here. And some of them, I'm honestly believing that they need uh, another presentation. For instance, issues around factionalism and the severity of factionalism in the organization. Let me leave it at that, comrade, uh, because uh, we, 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 we cannot be all over the place. Uh, 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 yes. They will present ourselves themselves. We will deal with some of these issues. No, no, well. correct, correct, Comrade. I, I appreciate that. In fact, at the same time, though, I must uh, acknowledge comrades for generally being very focused on the topic of today, because the temptation at times is to, you know, banking off ramping to many of the other issues that we all know are still pertinent to our organization. So. Uh, thank you uh, uh, for your responses. I'm going to take Comrade uh, Papano now and still apply the five minutes rule. So, Comrade Papano, we are at your mercy. Comrade Papano, please unmute. Yes, now yes, you're um... Yes, um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, I, I just wanted to check with uh, Comrade Jordi in particular. Don't you think that the, the caliber of an ANC comrade is a representation of the leadership of the ANC today? Because I listened to your statement when you said the bar has not even dropped. Now, I want to ask, what does an ordinary member of the ANC measure themselves against when patronage, nepotism, et cetera, et cetera, has become the order of the day? I think at times we become hard on ANC members who emulate what ANC leaders are doing, in particular our liberators. And, you know, I've, I've been to commissions, especially on education, and I've consistently asked, what is the ANC doing or um, the ANC in government? What are we doing in relation to people's education for people's power? Because we have a society which is a product of our own policies, a product of our education system, our product of social engineering and so forth. Now, how do we blame our people, society in general and ANC members when we don't necessarily have instruments to conscientize them. So I think we are a little bit too hard. Yes, as much as I do agree, and I, I agree with the characterization of what is a cadre, I think our own leaders, those who have liberated us, have done a great injustice. And many of us who uh, joined the ANC post 1994, what we have seen, we have seen a leadership engulfed in self gratification self-accumulation, accumulation for themselves and their families. So a typical ANC member or a person who joins the ANC, I mean, even now we're going to a conference, comrades are talking about tools. So this is the ANC that we have inherited from our forebearers, from our own liberators. I mean, I was uh, decrying the fact that as we go to us conference, I mean, this is one of the first conferences in fact um, that I've participated in, that we are not even hearing of the battle of ideas in terms of the commanding heights of the economy. So how do we, who joined the ANC post-1994, become a cadre that is envisaged, a cadre that Chuck Weber speaks about, a cadre who loves? But lastly, um, how do we love when we are in poverty, squalor, and degradation? Do we eat ideas on the heads of our liberators? Many of, many of them, um, financially, they are very well. And the majority of our people, including a typical ANC member, you know, is hungry. We're going to BGMs today. The majority of our members have not eaten. They're going to stay in BGMs for hours. So for me, there's a serious disjuncture um, that we are not looking at and setting expectations that our own liberators are not inculcating on us. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, Colonel uh, Papano. Thank you very much. I thought I saw the hand of Comrade Nomi earlier. Uh, Comrade Nomi, are you still going to take the floor or not? Comrade Nomi? Okay, we'll come back to Comrade Nomi. I'm, I'm oh, okay. Comrade Nomi, I had unmuted you, but I couldn't hear you, so I thought you are not on the line. Can Let you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear, Lida. Please hear, proceed. Oh, no, no, thanks, thanks, uh, Comrade JP, and uh, good afternoon to all comrades uh, in this very important conversation we are having. Uh, comrades, I think my two cents, I think with what... Um, the presenters have, have, have placed uh, unto us, I think um, go, um, I think leads to, leads one to, I think what Comrade Johnny uh, raises, I think in his conclusion, uh, that uh, perhaps as we navigate the space, um, we, we, we really need to concretely uh, define what are the tasks of this renewal and therefore the kind of a cadre of renewal that we, we, we desire. And I think there are immediate tasks that I think we need to sort of highlight whilst we consider our medium to long term. And I think in the previous conversation we had here from the JP, I think uh, we did mention uh, the notion of trying to projectize this very big uh, sort of animal called renewal that we all believe in as our end state, uh, because failure to do that, it, 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 it leaves us in sort of a situation that we are unable to manage and at times because the problems, you know, that have led us where we are have became so huge that we can actually be overwhelmed and, and, and discouraged. So I think it's important that we, we, we consider what are the things that we need to do, especially in the immediate, to give renewal a chance? And that uh, giving renewal a chance, indeed, there would be some kind of decisions that needs to be made that are unpopular by nature, you know, that are going to be even extremely difficult to con com comprehend, not contend with, but I think they require a level of leadership. And where that leadership is going to come from, I think, is a conversation that we need to have you know, so that um, uh, such is able to give it and to what uh, 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 is, the, is the nature of the task that we need. But also, you know, in the in the medium to, to long term, I think Comrade um, 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 Monwa and others relates, I think, to the notion of uh, the base and superstructure as our tools of analysis would, 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 would help us to understand that what is the nature of South African society both uh, the apartheid era and where we are. What drives people? Because remember the kind of people, as one comment has said here, that uh, the assumption is that a K that gets to be produced in a branch of an ANC, a branch of an ANC that uh, is actually practiced or exists in a particular social, economic, and political environment. So it's important that we are able to understand and what that environment is or is not in terms of it being a threat or an enabler to the African National Congress' quest to, to produce this kind of a cadre that we are looking for. Because remember, comrades, cadres even themselves, you know, are not necessarily, I think Comrade Johnny spoke to that, are not permanent, are not a permanent feature. They are dynamic, they get to be produced and reproduced, you know, over time. Because cadres are a function of their material realities. Because indeed, cadres of 1956 and, and 1976, versus uh, the time that you are in, would need particular uh, skills to deal with the material realities of the time. And thus it's important, given the social economic conditions that we live in, which actually are against this agenda of renewal that we're talking about, because the current uh, social and economic conditions are actually a fertile ground for the kind of problems that we're seeing in the ANC that is the rot, you know, um, corruption, greed, extortion, and all of that, because in the desperation, it therefore reproduces the kind of environment that we have. Thank you, Comrade JT. Okay, thanks very much, uh, Comrade Nomi. 
Uh, comrades, we, uh, and maybe first I must tell you that we are very grateful really with the type of response we've been getting to these dialogues. I think when we started at the very beginning of this program, we used to have about 50 people logging in. Uh, and now we're already in the 130, 140, 160 numbers. So we're quite encouraged by that. Uh, there's a comment that was made, I think, in the group uh, by our curriculum um, manager, Comrade Makwena, saying that those comrades who are happen to be sharing devices, they can give us a sense of who they are. So I'm gonna ask you in the group, if there's anybody who shares a device to do that, so that we can just get a sense about what the, the numbers we see here, if it's any more than what we have, if you could please, if you could please uh, indicate that. Uh, comrades, um, now I see there's two more hands and we are short of time, so I'm gonna appeal to you, Comrades Kahiso, and Comrade uh, Hoshi to please be very much to the point. So Comrade Kahiso, you are next on the floor, leader. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade J. Pilo. Uh, Mina, uh, mine is very short. Uh, the characteristics of uh, Ketra in the renewal process is that comrades must be able to allow even young people to be able to make uh, input in the in, on the branches and all on provincial and national as well. So all I'm trying to say is that as an organization, we need to always uh, put young people first because young people have innovative ideas that can be able to shape the country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lida. You sort of like have brought us back on time, by the way. Uh, Comrade Koshi, let's see if you can beat Comrade Kafis. Comrade Koshi? Uh, yes. Comrade Chaperin. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, revolutionary greetings to to you, Chair, and revolutionary greetings to the entire membership on this platform. I'm going to be one minute. Uh, the notes that I've made is too much, then I can't present them now. I will present them next time. Comrade Chair, I'm going to appeal to you uh, that uh, we revisit the issue of cater development from the, from the branches. Uh, I think, Comrade, Defense uh, at some certain point raised this that there are branches that don't even have meetings, they don't hold meetings. So those branches are non existent. And if you have cadres developed to run those branches, it will be proper uh, for, for the existence of the ANC to take place in those wards. Uh, number one. Number two, uh, I, I'm very concerned, Comrade Chair informed by the fact that we are we are having an alliance as as, as the ANC, COSATU, uh, SACP and SANCO, that we have cadres in those in those organizations. Uh, and they also belong to the African National Congress. But the utterances that we come across at some certain point in time with regard to their political inputs uh, are very worrisome, Comrade uh, Chair. Why I'm raising this, if you listen to, to the conference of, of, of the SACP, they were pulling to the left. Uh, if you listen to the conference of the Congress of the COSATU, they were pulling to this direction. And uh, all of them are not assisting in the renewal program of the African National Congress. So we are duty bound to make it a point that we, we revisit this question, yeah, 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 alliance. Actually, we, we go to reconfigure the alliance so that uh, the leader of society, which is the ANC, can be in a better position to revitalize the, the National Democratic Revolution. Under the current conditions, Chair, uh, we are misleading the nation. We are not leading because we are divided by ourselves as a member of the Alliance. And in that context, that's the reason why I'm raising the fact that we need to talk. 
Right, uh, Comrades, that will be the, the last of the comments we take. Uh, I won't really take any hands now for time. I see the there's been quite active engagement in the in the uh, chat group. Thank you all very much for that. Uh, you see if I can maybe pick some of the comments that have been made. Comrade Sipokazi also just uh, uh, doing a reminder there to comrades that uh, this uh, recording, all our Hala, Habilo dialogues are actually available on the school's uh, Facebook page, website, I think also you, uh, YouTube channel. So you could uh, reach out to it there. Comrade Benny was saying earlier today that the Kader understand what it means by sacrifice and being available uh, for one's people. So that point is uh, well taken. Uh, I would say this, I mean, there's a whole lot of um, comments, comrades, uh, like Comrade, Comrade Musa, for example, he was saying, I'm of the belief that the notion of the ANC remaining of the Romanian liberation movement today continue to trap us in the past. So that's probably a discussion point we need to come to it someday. What do we mean that the ANC liberation movement and how uh, does it uh, relate to our uh, purpose and duty of today in society? He goes on, Comrade Musa, to say, of course, we should not forget where we come from, but we need to modernize not only our thinking, but also the way we do things. I'm almost certain that the person or persons we're having in the party should not glorify people in prison, specifically those who were found guilty in court of law. This mindset should be discouraged. A renewed ANC should be selfless, should push thieves and carriers in the party. A very uh, a deep subject matter, uh, I would say, in terms of where our discourse is at, at the moment. There is a comrade who, it's very fortunate we didn't remove because they use the name Galaxy A03 Core and we always appeal to everybody to, to, to raise their names. But I read their comments nevertheless, they're saying, I think that we have successfully done all these good things and continue to do so. Decolonization is also necessary. What we need to start to stop until it stops are these tendencies of developing and dumping cages. Because I really think that's the critical point uh, why I thought this is important to read. It continues to say that we do this and later blame the cadres after they survive without us. We also need to tell the truth to our losses by indicating the loss and working against it. Singing around it and going back home without picking up the spirit to continue the fight is key. Molding children early will assist this country because if we do not do that, alcohol will do it for us. And that says, thank you for the opportunity. I mean, I, I, I suppose you get a gist of where that comment is going towards uh, uh, comrades. Um, Comrade Martin Sibutani um, uh, is saying that Akeda is a social being truly aligned with the organizational political line or tasks, uh, quoting uh, Le Juan there, and then says that Comrade Mao Zedong also alluded to the trajectory of selecting Kedas and assisting work where should be concentrated on, concentrated on political and ideological training. And of course, uh, take stock uh, responsibility in production of the ideological development and these individuals to be used by the organization properly in light of time and circumstances. There's a number of other comrade, uh, comments, uh, comrades. Comrade Kevin said, he speak earlier and he goes on further here to define characteristics of a CADA uh, in terms of how, how his understanding of how Che Guevara puts it forward. There's been comments, many comments. Comrade uh, Confidence, our speaker last week, he say, uh, who says the reason why the NC must have a continuous process of political education and, ide and ideological training is that CADA development is a lifelong process. The young and the old must continue learning the excellent uh, tradition and culture of the ANC in action. Well, those are some of the com uh, comments, uh, comments. Like I said, there's a number of others. We are certainly uh, um, debted to you, not only for being on this platform, but for continuing to engage on this platform. We do encourage you to keep the conversation going also on the Facebook pages. Uh, we also have this on the website, of course, and we're hoping that in your own localities, branches, all your different places, we can use this as resource material that you'll be able to go to the pages of our Tambo School and pick up whether it's an article of Mkhabulo or these very sessions that we're having and take that to use that as a basis for a discussion amongst comrades. We have lost our other speaker, Comrade Julia, but Comrade Johnny, we still have you here. So I'm gonna ask you for some concluding remarks if you have any. Uh, I think I also take importantly the point you made earlier that some of the issues raised 
really uh, require sessions on their own right and certainly take note because it guides us in terms of uh, um, for, um, as formulating what some of our future uh, subject matter should be. Comrade Johnny, any concluding remarks? No, thanks, Comrade JP. Uh, let, let me take uh, two, two or three. One that I need to dwell on is the articulation that was presented by Comrade Papan. And she makes a very interesting analysis. And the comment that was made by Comrade De Confi, in a way, addresses some of the issues that she was raised. And, and I would put it this way. If a person says to you that I joined the ANC in the year 2000, that person has been a member of the ANC for 22 years. And 22 years is a long period. But what has happened since that person joined the ANC at the 22 years that the person has spent in the ANC? That person has never gone through any induction whatsoever. So in terms of political understanding and understanding the political theory and philosophy of the ANC is, a good, is as good as a person who joined the ANC yesterday. And Comrade Papano raises a point that says, as people who joined the ANC after 1994, what is it that those who joined the ANC before is living for them? You know, what pattern in this relay are they picking up from those who joined the ANC before? Except all the wrong things. Now, and I, and, and I say this always, the day the young people do not allow the elderly to pay them to insult other elders, the ANC has a future. And I want to link this with the whole question of generational mix. I am a supporter of generational mix because I'm a beneficiary of generational mix. And Comrade Kofi will tell you, we, we, we started leading in the Congress movement when we were 2021. So who am I to be against generational mix? But I'm saying generational mix must be coupled with generational mission. What is the mission that the young people want to fulfill or to pray, as Franz Fanon would say? And, and, and I'm saying, we have this thing that the young that are in the organization, majority of them have not experienced being nature through the politics of the movement. Uh, and the politics of the movement is not Quoting Fanon there, Amilka Cabral there, uh, Antonio Gramsci there. It's living these teachings. Living these teachings is the only thing that will prepare you to the highest of being near a cadre. Now, having said that, I like the way Comrade Nomi brought the whole thing together. And I deliberately avoided doing that at the beginning. That all these things that we are discussing, we must find a way of linking them with the resolutions of the last national conference and the recent policy conference. Because if we are unable to bring life into these conferences, we are going to have conferences which at the end of the day, become nothing else but malicious compliance. Where we take resolutions and we come after five years, not even a single one of those resolutions has been implemented. But again, saying that the type of resolutions that we take in our conferences should be informed by practicality. Is it possible to implement some of the resolutions that we arrive at or we 
come up with resolutions at the end of the conference where all delegates are almost tired and they are content with the type of leadership that they've got together. And they are less interested in deliberations in the commission. So these are the things that we need to, to start looking at. And, and comrades, what, what is it? What are the things that we have to be done to make sure that we read the organization of fac factionalism, we read the organization of the use of money, we read the organization of Pumangen. What are the things, practical things that we need to employ so that we clean this organization? Uh, and Lenin said, better few, but better. But how do we arrive at that better few without actually shooting ourselves in the food? And I think comrade, uh, uh, com comrade JP and the comrades, th there's a lot that can be said about the, 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 the deliberations of today and the interaction. And, 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 and there are crazy ideas flying around and we need to just bring them together and find a way of championing and fashioning these things in such a manner that they assist us to renew our organization. Let me take this opportunity to thank uh, the, the, the Tambo School of Leadership for affording me an opportunity to, 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 to come and, and share my opinion of thought and say, I really feel humbled. I know the a decision to bring me up here was not taken lightly. Thank you very much. Comrade Johnny, we are the ones indeed very grateful to you, as well as Comrade Julia for making the time and preparing for today's session. Uh, thank you very much to, to, to yourselves for sharing your insights. Comrades, uh, thanks to all of you as well. Uh, we are back again next Sunday at 12 p.m. Uh, to finish again at 2 p.m. Next, uh, next week, we're hoping to look at the subject of political education and civic education in the context of uh, ANC renewal. Uh, what should this be? Uh, how do we get this to happen appropriately? You have a number of efforts across provinces and so on. And uh, political education is spoken about that it needs to happen and others try to organize themselves around it. But how do we make sure that it's impactful in a manner that it is properly structured and you know that it is delivered in a manner uh, that is uh, impactful appropriately right throughout the organization. You have, don't have the one type of uh, offering in one part of the world and another one that's different and then the results don't give you the outcome that you really want that talks to renewal. So it's on that note that we're also ending today's session. Uh, I really, really very much want to I thank all of you for being here. Uh, my comrade Sipokazi, uh, who um, uh, helped to uh, put this session of today together. Thank you very much, uh, Sipo, for that. And I'm hoping that we will see all of you next week, if not more of you. Please have a pleasant week ahead and uh, make sure that you share whatever you've gathered here with other comrades in different spaces. Good afternoon. Thank you, comrades. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, comrades. Thank you, comrades. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Manda. Manda. Thank you very much.